mini system. You gotta love them, right? Uh, by now, this is gonna be probably my third or fourth mini system that I talk about, but I feel that sometime, especially when you are, yeah, lucky like me, having a lot of instrument, it's great to build something around one module, focus on it and really learn it well. When uh, Manuel from Oxy contacted me, uh, I guess several months ago now, uh, telling me about his new project, the Coral, which is the things we will talk about today, uh, it gets me very excited. Uh, you know me and I am a big supporter of Oxy since the beginning. There's a lot of company that I work with, but definitely uh, I am in touch with uh, Manuel uh, a lot and uh, I love what he's doing. I love his uh, commitment to its product. By now, uh, so far, there's only, I've been the Oxy, that is one of my favorite sequencer and he kept updating and pushing it and making it better for years now. The community that he leads is great. And of course, when he came out with the idea of a uh, module i was like super excited like what is gonna be and well what he did is something insane he uh put in a, these small footprints here a lot a lot of power we are talking about a multi timbral eight voice full synthesizer full voice uh with a lot of stuff effects uh adsr full MIDI CC implementation, CC modulation. It's insane. Um, I was surprised to know it could fit everything in this. I was also curious to know, will it sound good? Will it be usable? Um, and now yeah, I will answer to this question in the video. We will do an overview. I'll give you three examples. It's a complex model. It has so many things going on. So don't uh, even hope that these will be exhaustive of all the function of the Coral or Coral, Coral. Actually, one of my first track that I ever recorded as Aura name was Coral. Oral Coral, I don't know. I think the guy is obsessed with me, Manuel. Uh, that said, I decided, of course, to build a mini system around it. You know me, I'm not a super Eurorack modular guy. I am super simple and I like simple thing. So I decided, why don't we do full tracks using the Coral as main voice, then uh, a delay, and uh, most of the time the Mimeophone eats uh, the easiest choice because it sounds good it also has some reverb so it's great for textural and ambient kind of work uh, planner uh, planner um, data bender and of the chain i love it every there it creates so much texture and unpredictability that is super cool and then a couple of uh, uh, modulation source the batumi and the planner which is fun to use because, you know, you la we like joystick. And that's it. A, a buff mold and the AA1 from Strymon as main out for the system. Uh, then I, I released some video on, ins uh, on Instagram using the desk with other stuff. And this thing sounds brilliant. It's, I'm sure also it, there's a lot of potentiality for future update and uh, refining. I know that uh, Manuel is still working on the uh, final uh, firmware, but I'm impressed. Like this can be definitely the uh, main voice of your system, considering that the, if you set up properly, this could be eight separate, fully controllable synthesizer in this space. Uh, I mean, what, what else can I say? Let's just do an overview and let's go through a couple of examples and enjoy. Let's go. Oh, hey, before going into the demo part, I forgot the way you can support me. 
First, you can buy the coral using the link down below. I will get a tiny percentage and that will really help me. You can buy from other affiliate link that you will find same concept. You can become a Patreon, which is a great way to support and also learn and get access to a lot of exclusive exclusive uh, material. Plus we can do also one-on-one -on -one lesson. What else? You can subscribe and share this page. That's free and super helpful. And last but not least, remember, I also do music. That's my main thing. Uh, you can listen to that everywhere, Spotify, all the streaming thing. But if you want to really support, go on my Bandcamp, buy some of my album, share them. Uh, oh yeah, just go click on my Spotify and make my listening count go up. So, you know, I'll become super, super famous. Anyway, let's go on the demo now. Okay, so what is Coral? Coral is a eight voice polysynth multi-timbral synthesizer. Wow, what does it mean? It means that uh, it's a, basically an eight voice polysynth, but you can group the voice, this eight voice, in different parts uh, to a point where you can have eight different parts, which means basically that you will have eight different fully controllable synthesizer, or you can create a smaller part, uh, less parts with more voices. For example, four parts and each one will have two voices. Or in the example that I will give you to keep things simple, I will have a three parts monophonic and one part with four voices to make chords. Uh, Whenever you turn it on, uh, the basic setup, the, the, um, it will be as a mono uh, polyphonic mono timbral part, mono timbral synth, means that you will have all the voices group on one MIDI channel. Whenever you change the MIDI channel uh, of a voice, a new part will be created. So this module allows you to do a lot of stuff and might sound a little confusing at the beginning uh, and it needs a little time to get into it and how um, Manuel at Oxy uh, decided to make things work. Once you get it, it's really, really smart. Uh, it has a really, really smart workflow. So again, I set up my Oxy on channel one. Uh, so now whatever I play on the preview page should send a MIDI message and I should have eight voice on my finger. And here it is. Whenever you press a um, key, you will see the voice that is triggered. Now you have 10 different LED, but you will have eight voices. So that's the basic way to use the Coral is turn it on and use it as an eight voice poly synth. What control and what kind of sound you have? You have a lot of possibility. First, you have 10 different uh, synth uh, algorithms, synth voices, whatever you want to call it, from like FM, wavetable, uh, from virtual analog, a lot of stuff, and it would be impossible for me to analyze everything. I want to give you an overview, so for in-depth stuff, you can read the manual or um, probably see on subsequent videos. It also has a very powerful sample player, and I am amazed because you can feed it any kind of sample and it will work. The sample playback is monophonic, so you, you cannot create chords with that unless you do some trick and uh, assign the sample machine, I can call machine because I like the electric stuff, to other channel. But let's listen very quickly to something and then we can see the other control. So in the first position, it's a virtual analog and you have two different uh, oscillator that you can detune with arm. You can change with timber and morph the different wave shape. And then with frequency and octave, you change the octave 
Now, my uh, oxy choral is a pre-production, so these are, there's an error here, frequency and octave, it's switched. So when you move this, it will change the octave. And then you see that there's other uh, controls and that happens when you press the central encoder. And then you can add, for example, change the MIDI, do the fine tuning and add chorus or noise. So what do you have more? You have a filter here. You have the filter envelope, the filter resonant, and then your ADSR control here from amp attack, sustain, release. And here you have the modulation of the attack on the filter. Each one of these four main buttons uh, has a different function depending on the uh, algorithm you're using. For example, now this one is a wave shaping. This third one is FM modulation. Then in four position, we have wavetable. For wavetable, you have uh, this come with an app in which you can easily create and export your wavetables. Pretty fun. Maybe, maybe we set up some, some sequence. Oh, sorry, my, my alarm went off. So let's set that. So we can now play with the control. I'm not using any effect, so we want to just listen to the pure sound of the chorus. You can you have two effects included. One is the uh, reverb. You can introduce it pressing this and using the filter, which sounds pretty nice to me. Here you can select also pressing this the level and the pan. Also you have a noise and a chorus. Whenever you change a value, you will see that there's one white dot. That means that you have to catch that to then make modification. So that is basically the uh, how the sound is saved. So to modify, you have to catch that point and then move. So this sounds nice. Let's change and let's go back to this is the FM. This is the virtual analog. This is called the mod. This is very nice. This record me, really remind me of uh, Lorenzo Senni. Right? Very nice. Then we have a string, a string uh, algorithm. And then we have three engine for iHat. Snare, that can sound also like percussion. and kick. Of course, you can remove the space and add different amount of 
chorus and uh, reverb if you want. And then the last position, it's sample. You have 10 folder and each folder can hold 32 samples, so 320 samples. I had that stuff of 100 megabytes and it, they work pretty fine. You can, you can listen here. Now these are my sample. I didn't normalize and I realized it's good to normalize them. Harm uh, had distortion, this octave, and then with morph, you select the 10 different uh, folder. And then with timber, the different um, sample in it. So these are samples that I put. And you can play with the key uh, monophonically. But very nice. So, what else? You have uh, this five knob can function also as a tenoverter. If you press and then you move, this will be, uh, um, I think, uh, bipolar attenuverter, as you can see, and for this control down here. And here are the CC controllable uh, thing. So, for example, let's let's say we want to control our um, filter. I will put this. And now I have my filter control and I can control the attack. And so on and on and on. Um, you can do that via MIDI tool. So each voice has a full MIDI implementation so you can control anything using the, uh, your MIDI controller, for example. I know that the, in Oxy the mod will control on the modular lane, uh, control the filter cutoff. So I can now I can control here with the mod wheel. Open and close. And I can actually with the Oxy, I have the chance to sequence that, and that's pretty cool. All right, this setup, very easy. The, uh, if you want to use it as a polyphonic, simple synth, you have eight voice, everything in front of you, fine. And it sounds pretty good. Uh, again, now we didn't do any sound design, we just got through it. I forgot to mention, here you have your uh, card where you load your sample, your wavetable, blah, blah, blah. But what if I want to create something more crazier? Let's say I want to have track one, two, and three as mono synth, and track four as a um, poly synth. Let's do it. Let's see how it works. So whenever First, when you press quickly the encoder, you have four different pages. When it's not light, when, when it's unlight, you are in the basic operation mode. When it's blue, it's a loading, so you have tram preset that you can load. We don't want to load it now. Uh, then you have the save, where you save your preset, and then you have the CV assignation. So like this, you you pick uh, which voice uh, will work when you use this. So having one part, all the things are light, means that all the CC modulation act on all the voices. And this again, because we didn't create any other part. So now it's time to create a part. To do that, first you have to hold, and press this guy, and when you press, you have you will go through different modality. First, the blue one. So here is where you rotate and choose eight voice, one by one, voice one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, or all of them, and then you go in the green 
thing and the green are the part. Now we don't have, we only have one part and this one part has all the eight voices, all right? The moment that I will assign to a voice a different MIDI channel, automatically another part will be created. So right now I have track one with this thing. I want a track two, which will send on MIDI channel two, another part. So what do I do? I first put it in minor. I select is a mono synth again. And now I hold and rotate. So this is part one, voice one, which is on track one. I will select the second voice here and then move the MIDI channel. I have to catch first MIDI channel one and then move it and decide which channel is it. So I will put it on channel two. Now, Hopefully, if I go in preview and play this other track, track two, the second part, will be triggered. And here it is. So, I can play, and this is the other track, but now I am on track two, on a voice two, sorry. Here it is, and I can change for example, and had the kick, I don't know. And now, here it is, we have the kick. So now on this track, let's, it could be something like that. Nice. Uh, what happened now in the Oxy? So, if you see, if you move it, now the green part, you have the first one, which are all on MIDI channel one, which has seven voices, and then the second part, which is on channel two, which only has one voices. Now, what we can do? We want to add something more? Sure. So let's go on track three. It's will be broadcast on MIDI channel 3. So I press here, I select the blue voice number 3, move the MIDI, so I catch this and I go on channel MIDI 3. Now, if I play here, here it is, another, another track. So let's select another sound here, a bass. Or one of my sample. So let's trigger one of my sample. And let's add here. Now, we have three parts, and you can see that by keep pressing, and if we go on the green part selector, we have part one with, seven vo with six voices, part two with one voice, part three with one voice. At this point, you can understand that you can keep creating part until you have eight part. Now, if you want to modify things, you can either select this, the voice that you're interested in, for example, voice one or voice two or voice three, but I like to select part because if I select part one, all the voices in that part will be uh, changed. So. Say I want to uh, modify the filter or some setting, I need to select the part. So I'd select, for example, part one. And now whatever I do, if I modify any of these settings, will be applied only on part one. So, basically, now I have the chance to create my eight different synthesizer, work on their ADSR filtering, and then I can also decide to modulate. So, say I want to modulate just one of the voice. You can use these only with one voice at a time. So how you select that, you press three times and now you are in the selecting page. So you can select voice one, part one, sorry, part two or part three. So let's say we want to keep 
the modulation on part one, you press, and now all of this will work just on part one. Let's again select our filter, let's play. And now I have my filter. And now I have an automation here. So let's remove the automation. What you can do, of course, you can modulate via MIDI all the other track. So for example, I can go on my sample and I can modify the cutoff filter. And again, I can create some automation. And this now, for example, I want to start adding, let's add some effects. Let's make it spicier. So now we are, it's time to talk about the, the overview of the system. We have the Oxy going inside the Mimeophone. From the Mimeophone, we go inside the Data Bender, which is my favorite end of chain effect, and then into the Stramon AA1. Strymon into the uh, auto, which was turned off right now. And we had a tiny bit of compression and distortion, and then into the uh, um, mixer. So, the clock out from the Oxy goes inside the buff mold, and then I have the Batumias LFO and Planar to do eventual more um, modulation if I want to use the hardware. So, uh, as you can already hear, you create something very cool and interesting just using one module for all the voices. Now, I don't want to go further too much in uh, explaining things. I will give you three or four examples uh, uh, of things that I created. More uh, demo will come later on. Again, it is a I'd say not complex one, once you get it, but this module, like the module that can do a lot, needs some time to strategize, to understand how you want to use it. Similar to my Octatrack, the first time I bought it, I wanted to use it in so many ways and I end up not using it. You need to focus on what is the purpose. So for now, what I'm enjoying doing is having play with the Oxy one and I have four track and four different voice here. How I group the voices to create different parts usually is like having one, two and three as mono synth and four as a poly or chord synth. And so I group one voice, one voice, one voice and the other four voice here. So it makes sense also uh, for the MIDI sending, for getting everything all together. Uh, Let's move to a few examples and then we close the video. All right, so this is example one. I created a sort of dub, dub techno ambient track, which I really like. So let's play it. <laughs> I have a sample on track three that I recorded, and then on track four, I have this chord all created by Oxy using three voices. I can also play on top of it if I want. I go into the Mimephone and Data Bender for some things, and then on track two, I have a bass. And on track one, a kick. So I can push the volume of the kick with the velocity here. So the track would start something like that. It's super moody, 
super dirty. I have some modulation via MIDI going into the Oxy Coral. And then I have the four on the four part that comes when I want. And I like to create a soundscape now because with the use of the data bender and mimeophone, you can really create interesting universe. Uh, of course, ju this is just one sequencer. We're just one sequence, all voice, again, coming from the Oxy. Three different synth engine and one sample. Okay, let's move to example number two. In this one, I created something more electro, more up-tempo, and again, same kind of structure, four track, and I kept the same uh, use of parts and voices. Let's listen. Kick on track one, on three there's this high pitch uh, voice which I panned, let's, let's pan it. You can also automate panning and then on two there's this sort of bass which you can also put a lower um, octave. I mean... This is super fun. Instant performance friendly. Um, the great part here is like you have everything here, everything MIDI controllable, couple of effects, a filter and compressor on the end. I mean, you can go anywhere you want. Let's now listen to the last example. This is more of just a vibey I can control with this the filter cutoff of the first voice. And here it is. So it's pretty brilliant. Everything was made uh, with just one voice. Well, not one voice, but just one model. All the voice coming from here. I guess if you're into small system, uh, this is could be the way to go. But let's go to conclusion. All right, now you hear it, you see how it works, and now it's up to you to decide if this is one of the best module ever created as a voice. I think so, like I never see anything like this uh, full with uh, potential like this. Uh, if you use it as your main voice and you would have 
a constant uh, dialogue with it, I think it's definitely worth a look. It's not probably the kind of module that to use sporadically because you need to learn its workflow and how manual setup, uh, the, the technical part of it. So the more time you give it, the more it is rewarding. I didn't touch a lot of sound uh, design part in this demo because of course, otherwise it would take hours. Uh, the 10 different um, machine, the 10 different engine that it has really cover everything you need. And uh, I'm sure also that uh, Manuel will keep updating it and making it better and better and better. There's a, he was very pushy to, for me to try the wave um, shaping thing, the, the, the app that come with it, and I didn't have time yet to go through it. I just scratched the surface. And yes, it's super powerful. I love the idea of having a full sample player, simple that I don't need crazy stuff, Otherwise, I will use the octator. But if I do a live show, then I can trigger my sample and they can be as long as I want. I can also, with CV, change part, change folder. So that's another thing that I didn't touch. But uh, for um, you can CV, change part, and uh, all this the kind of stuff. So. Somehow it reminds me when on the Octatrack or those Electron things, you can change the sample per step, creating weird, weird outcome, unpredictable outcome. So again, this was a first impression kind of video. It's my, uh, this is just been released. So I wanted to be on the first wave of people talking about it, both for the love that I have for Oxy and for the fact that I really enjoy using it. Um, to conclude, who would benefit from this model? I think there's different kind of synth musician around. There's the people that need many instruments and each instrument do its own thing. And so you can focus and you mentally be learning only one thing and like you have uh, your bass synth, you have your drum, you have your filters, blah, blah, blah. I am kind on that side because I'm a simple man. Uh, then there's people that like multifunctionality. So having in a, a convenient package, a lot of power. If you are that kind of person, this is a no brainer. Really, there's nothing in the market as powerful as this in this small footprint. It will give to your modular system a lot, a lot of power. I have to say that the more I'm playing with this kind of products that gives you smart way of working, the more I'm getting into the enjoying having on my fingertip more power. That's because most of the time I end up using the same three things and be like focused on the same sound. So these kind of tools really helps to get off the uh, path. And um, those kind of example that I play, which is something simple, but different than that, what I would do with my performer. And I lately enjoy going outside the comfort zone. I talk about many times and I love having tools like this. Uh, what I'm thinking to do with it and what I'm thinking to do with this system, it's to create my, the, the, the chain link that my dub uh, setup miss. So I, I want to use the desk, the analog rhythm, the 303, and then this will create, will trigger sample and will create chords. And I think the choral is the perfect tool for that. Uh, I want to add some generative way of triggering chords. That could be also uh, interesting to use the chord pilot for Nobula, from Nobula. So maybe another demo will be 
the chord pilot here and see with some triggering uh, how it will behave in a dub, in a live dub performative setup. So stay tuned because that will come. Uh, congrats, Oxy, for this new release. I am super happy that this is out. Please, if you want to support the page, uh, check the link down below. You can actually have the Cora for, uh, you can buy it using the link and help me. I'll get a tiny percentage for you. Nothing will change. And yeah, that's about it. I'll see you next week, right? Ciao.